Hey everybody, thanks for checking out another one of my videos. On this one, I'd like to discuss pushing the limits of the modern browser. Uh, what does that mean? Well, uh, I've been working on my app, as you know, this uh, desktop environment in the browser, where I've attempted to actually use quite a bit of uh, interesting things, a lot of new web APIs. And uh, I'd like to just discuss a little quickly what, what these web APIs are, what the, the modern browser is, and uh, what kind of pushing the limits I've been doing recently. So let's just dive right into it and I'll show you. So this is my website, dustinbrett.com. Uh, I'm currently hosting this locally, so it's local host right now. That's my website, you know. Um, but this has all the latest changes and I, there's a couple of changes I haven't posted recently that I've just been working on because I'm working on it all the time and I don't want to break it for people. But it's it, these have been some interesting changes, so I thought uh, we could discuss them. As far as what I mean by the modern browser, by the way, um, I would just say that the latest version of the browser. So if you whatever the newest version of Chrome happens to be 98 or whatever that is, that's that's my goal to target. You know, if I can, if my app can work in that, that's okay. Because what I'm I'm building for the future. You know, uh, I'm not trying to sell a product or anything, so I don't need my website to necessarily work 100% all the time. This can also be relevant for people making Electron apps or that kind of thing, where you're bundling it in a, a Chromium of your choosing. And you can perhaps use more modern features, and and in in that case, you can even go further, and you can start flipping feature flags, which uh, browsers typically will have some of those to enable things that are are the far future, let's say, or might not even ever happen for for the modern for all browsers at least. But this is something Chromium is popular for Chrome, where they'll have a lot of interesting feature flags. Actually, Firefox as well. Um, perhaps Safari. I don't really use it too much, to be honest. So that's what I mean by pushing the limits. As far as web APIs, if you see here, uh, this is MDN Web Docs. They talk about different web APIs. And there's a lot of interesting ones out here that are, there's just more all the time that are doing so many cool things. And I like to actually just go through this and kind of try to implement some of these things and get stay on the cutting edge. Like a lot of times you can see, let's, let's say the file system access API. This is actually the first thing I wanted to discuss today. If you go down here to the can I use uh, or not, well, they don't call it can I use here. It's equivalent, the browser compatibility list. You'll see here that it, it has some incompatibilities. Luckily, Safari now supports it. So that's pretty cool. And and this is the kind of thing I'm talking about where you see all these no, no, no's 10 years from now, 20 years from now, those will all be yeses, of course. So these are exciting features now to be building for uh, just for the heck of it, you know. I mean, I have a website that's 20 years old back in the day. It's, it doesn't exist anymore, but I used to build websites 20 years ago, and I think it would have been cool if this tech existed to have been able to work on it then and kind of uh, see all these new things as they kind of uh, come into fruition, let's say. So the first one I did here, talking about File System Access API, is this, when I posted my app, actually, people were talking about this. Uh, if you go here to map directory, it'll actually open a directory and let me map a local drive. So let's say, uh, let me just pick a, sorry, not a drive, but a folder. So let me pick a folder here that's a good example. I'll just pick my main shared folder. Here we go. It says, do you want to share? Yes. And there we go. So we have a shared folder here. And this is actually directly a local drive, um, a local folder on my system. But because of the file system access API here, I'm able to read all the contents inside it and get all the pictures and everything like that. Now, one thing I didn't allow before was for this to be retained. So if I were to close this and I were to refresh the page or go away, come back, that was gone. Now, as you can see, it's still there, which is kind of a cool feature. Uh, actually, on that note, oh, no, I do have disconnect now, too. So I've added disconnect, which is helpful. But uh, the way to reconnect is just to try to open it again. And it's going to go, oh, interesting. Um, this could be because it's running a local host, but the it will ask again for permissions as well. Yeah, I think it's because I was running in local host perhaps that it didn't re-ask, but it can re-ask as well. I'm not sure how to get it to actually do that. It's interesting that it's not asking me now, but there will be a there is a prompt where it checks to see if it needs permissions again. It looks like for for one reason or another it's not needing them. So even better in local host, it's even easier to retain these folder shares, and this could be useful for other people that want to use the app as well. So that's one of the first cool little modern things. So if you you wanted, you could always have this little open door to the website. Or to uh, if you went to my website, you could access your own directory files. Another really cool thing I've added, and this is getting into how the power of WebAssembly, and, and again, the future of the browsers, is I've added video conversion abilities. So I also have drag and drop. So let's take a picture from my desktop and just drag it and drop it right on here. So this is a, sorry, not a picture, a video. So this is a little sample video. Very poor quality, but it's the little rabbit stretching his arms. You've, you've seen it a million times. And now what I've added here is if you right-click it, you can go convert, and I have all these different formats we can convert it into. 
So it was an MP4, and I could convert it to, let's say, MKV. And you see here in the console, it'll actually, it's actually running FFmpeg and converting the video, transcoding it on the fly. Uh, unfortunately, right now, it's running on the main thread. That's something I'm working on solving. But until then, it kind of locks things up. Uh, and there you go. So it created it. So now we have an MKV file. It also plays. Uh, but this video is a completely different format. If I hover over it here, I can see in the tooltip it's 864 kilobytes, but the original was 531 kilobytes, so it got bigger. Um, I don't have it right now currently set up to be able to configure what the transcoding settings are to perhaps make it smaller, which would probably be ideal. Uh, but it's a proof of concept. Another proof of concept here that I have, so that's FFmpeg uh, WASM. FFmpeg is very popular for video transcoding in all different platforms, and WebAssembly has allowed them... Uh, possibly via mscript and I'm not sure. However, they've done it with WebAssembly. They've made it so that it can run in the browser now, which has given us uh, that cool feature. So let's say 10, 20 years from now, you take, who knows, like a two gigabyte file. I right click, I press convert on computers of the future. Maybe it's just like, bam, especially if I increase, keep working on efficiencies and keep building on this proof of concept. But for now, it's a proof of concept. Uh, next one is Image Magic. That's another popular one. In the same way that FFmpeg is for video, Image Magic is for like photos. And if you see here, they also have a WebAssembly port and with similar, somewhat simple APIs. And I've also done that as well. So if we see here, I drag a picture on, there's a picture of me, opens in the photo app like so, and I can right click and say convert and I can actually pick a different format. So let's say I wanna, what is it? It's JPEG, I wanna make it into a PNG. I click PNG and I forgot to turn on the drum roll. There we go. And it prints it out there. So in both cases, it's not very verbose as to what's happening. I still need to work on some progress bars, but the concept's there. So now again, the JPEG was 1.1 megabyte, and this is four megabytes. So again, we lost efficiency, but there you go. Now we have a PNG version of it. So we were able to convert images and video on the fly there, which is kind of cool, I felt. Next interesting thing I really wanted to do, and this has been lacking from my site for a while, is search. Uh, but again, knowing me, I wanted to keep everything client side, no server, just the web server. So what I've done is I've gone and I've used this Lunar, which, oh, that's interesting. There's like a hidden little, oh no, it's not a hidden character. It's just each little character is quite a large square there. Um, but this allows client side search and I've been able to integrate it in as you'd expect in the file explorer. And you can see it there, just like a little thing. So let's say in the case of this, these pictures right here, I want to type Dustin. Um, okay, I didn't find it. That's a good start. Um, hmm, interesting. Okay, well, the, you know, there's still some things to iron out, but it did find some stuff. It found my resume with my name Dustin on it. Ignore that console error. That's actually completely normal, that error. Um, I'm surprised it didn't find this, though. That's something I've been working on. But as you can see, it didn't find that by file name. It's possible... I think I might know the reasoning behind that, but let's let's do a test here. What if I were to make a file named Dustin Brett that's a text file? And now if I search Dustin, see, there we go. Now it finds it. So I think I just found another little bug in, involving the fact that this is a binary file. It's not being indexed properly. But I still would have wanted it to be indexed based on file name. Probably means that sample's also not going to get found. Yeah, so currently it's not indexing binary, but I do want it to index the file name. So I'll add that to my notes, my to-do list. Um, and in the interim, yeah, that's it's still a cool search. So let's say for my blog, let's say, oh, when did I go to Japan? I can just search Japan. And I can find all different Japan things. Here's my blog where I went to Tokyo. Uh, what was that other Japan thing? That was some kind of Japan picture. Oh yeah, that was me in Osaka. So people can can do quick little searches that way. I've also integrated it into the terminal. So you can do again the same thing, find Japan, and it'll find all those items there. And let's say you want to pick one and, oops, and just resize the window randomly for no good reason. Here we go, we want to pick one, paste it. Oh yeah, allow pasting. Forgot the L, and I can run it like that. What happened? Oh, I need it in quotes. Quote at the front, quote at the back. There we go. Oh, that's the same blog post. So let me close it, and then there we go. That's the proof of concept of it opening. That was another cool little thing with search, and and also FFmpeg and Image Magic as well work this way. So let's say I go into the desktop here, clear this, and what is it called? Sample. So let's say FFmpeg sample uh which one sample let's just delete one of these delete this one uh, ffmpeg sample oh wait did i not just delete it hmm maybe this is autocomplete failing on me i have to go in and out of the directory for my autocomplete to work 
Another bug. I'm finding bugs left and right. That's always a little fun thing. There we go. Now it only knew there was one. So let's say from MP4, and I want to convert it to MKV. So again, it's going to lock up if I press it. Oh, it actually didn't even lock up. That's interesting. Okay, yeah. It did lock up when it came to the actual processing, which is why you can see only the console is showing it. But it did print out the first little bits, which is kind of cool. And again, this was able to run in the terminal. And there we go. There's our converted file in the end. And again, it works just the same. So that was as an MKV. That was another cool proof of concept. And finally, one that I'm still working on, I'm only at part one of it, is IRC. I found this website, ircdocs.horse. I didn't even know there was a .horse top-level domain. But one thing that caught my eye, and I've actually kind of known about this a little bit before with IRC v3 spec and the fact that they've added WebSockets, but they had a cool tester here called the WebSocket Tester that really like uh, hammered it in because they even had listed three servers. They have Ergo, Inspire, and Unreal. So what I started doing is, and, and they have the code here showing you how to just use WebSockets to connect in, to public IRC servers now, purely client side. So I don't have any server side on my thing, but what I'm able to do if we just close these here is now I have my IRC client and I've kind of modeled a little bit of visually on MIRC and borrow their icon. And you can see here now I'm using the Unreal IRCD server, port 443 with Daedalus as the name. And if I press connect, there we go, it connects. Or well, slowly, drum roll. Uh, oh, it says my nickname is already in use. That's interesting. Maybe I, I never got disconnected from last time. Let's give give me a little bit more difficult nickname. Dash test. And it should fully... Yeah, there we go. So we're fully connected to a public uh, IRC server. And we can send it commands. I can say, give me a list of all the channels. I want to join, uh, the, let's say, the India channel. You can see it's just me and another guy, Raymond, in there. I can send a message to Raymond, I think. I actually don't know the IRC command for that. But that's another cool proof of concept where I'm using just purely client side to actually connect to a public server. And uh, yeah, that's that's mostly what I wanted to show is just kind of some of the features I've been adding to my, my app and just how I'm trying to keep pushing the limits of the modern browser. I've got a bunch of post-its, as you can see, of work more to do. A little bit I've done there, but I, I've actually cleaned that board uh, since, since last year when I kind of did what I've done on this project. And now I've got a whole new board of, of pushing the limits and... Thanks for checking it out, and if you like this video, please throw me a like. If you want to subscribe, please uh, do that as well, because it's motivating, and uh, you'll see more of this cool content, and you can feel free to comment uh, with criticisms, concerns, comments, anything like that. Uh, it's all much appreciated, so thank you very much, and see you in the next one.